Hi guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. This is a brand new weekly reading vlog. And this one is special because we have the reading rush. So if you guys have not already checked out my Reading Rush TBR, it is posted on my channel. If I can be bothered, I'll link it up above. But the first thing I have to do for the Reading Rush is finish the last 25% of Escaping from Houdini by Karen Maniscalco. I finally got around to reading this last week and I'm super excited to finish it. I have no idea who the killer is and it is just killing me to not know. I don't know if this will count for my Reading Rush or not, but I am starting today and hopefully finishing Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters because I'm part of the Reading Random Book Club and Soleil and I are both, you know, co-hosts for it. So we're going to try and binge it and read the entire book tonight. Can I do it? Maybe. We shall see. Sea of Monsters is actually the smallest book in the PJO series. And yep, that's all I really needed to say for now. And I'll catch you guys up later. Bye. What's up? So it's 8.16 p.m. and I finished Escaping from Houdini by Kerry Maniscalco and then I read The Tea Dragon Society and I read The Tea Dragon Society while sitting on the couch and I didn't move my booty for 15 minutes. I really don't think it even took me that long to read it. But I just completed that challenge for um, the reading rush. But Escaping from Houdini. I had a lot of mixed feelings with this book. I really enjoyed it. I was laughing out loud. I was cackling. Like, it is just such, like, Carrie Maniscalco, all of her books just make you laugh and just the witty banter in it is just great. And I know I said, like, in my last week's vlog that the love triangle, like, wasn't bothering me that much. But I will say that in the last 25%, it becomes more prominent than it had been for the beginning of the book. Like the beginning of the book was fine. The first 75%, like it didn't bother me. In the last 25%, it did bother me. And then the book ended and I kind of was like, gonna yell at the book. And then there's like an epilogue that happens and it's months later. That was fine, that fixed everything. But if the epilogue was not there, we would have had an issue, okay? I mean, it would have been fine without it. I just would have been like a lot more frustrated with how it ended. But I do know that the novella just came out, which takes place between the end of the book and the epilogue. So I'm actually really excited to read that. I did not see the killer coming, the reason behind the killer. And I think there was, there is one point where you do, ex you suspect everyone at some point, but you never really know who it's going to be. So I thought that it was very interesting how all the way back together. Oh well, that's all for now. Bye. Okay, so I'm 91% through Sea of Monsters. I'm on page 254 of 279. <laughs> and I had to stop because Soleil texted me and she was all like, bruh, stop reading. I need to catch up. Like, that's not actually what she said. She sent me like five subsequent text messages that made me look at my phone and I was like, oh my God, fine, I'll wait. So I'm waiting for Soleil to catch up. And I'm thinking maybe while I wait for it to catch up, I'll pick up the avant garde because I need to read that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm deciding. I'm getting some of this coffee out right now because I need more coffee. Okay, so I just put my coffee into the microwave. Wow. Um, but I have been having Percy Jackson as I've been reading it. And I feel like it's just really easy to tab because there are so many things that I know. Like the difference is when you reread a series, it's a lot easier to use the purple plot marks, I find, because you already know things that are going to happen, things that are important. But I feel like I use a lot of orange, which is just things that I like, and yellow, which is for like funny, laugh out loud moments that are hilarious. Like there's this one bit that I have for funny and it's a minute later Annabeth hit a slippery patch of moss and her foot slipped fortunately she found something else to put it against unfortunately that something was my face <laughs> so like those kind of things like I don't know it's a middle grade so it's just so many hilarious things I don't know I just really love it like I will say that out of all like this one feels more middle grade than the first one felt, and I think it's just because there was like a lot of times that they were recapping things that happened in the first book, or even just like, I guess it's because it's a middle grade and I've read this series before that I know a lot of things. So I'm just like, oh my God, do you have to explain like this 
so word for word slowly. But I'm so excited for the third book because we finally get my baby Nico D'Angelo. Ah! I'm so excited. Yeah, I really like this one. I think my favorite thing about this one is Grove in a wedding dress. So, yes. Well, that is all I wanted to say for now, and I'll catch you guys up later. Bye. Good morning. So, it is 11.20 a.m. I have a nail appointment in 10 minutes to get my nails done. I finished Sea of Monsters last night. I actually FaceTimed with Soleil and we were chatting and talking and we read the last 20 pages together, kind of, technically. Mm. I love the ending of Sea of Monsters. It's so, like, beautiful. But today I'm pretty much just gonna try and work on my essay that I have to do a speech for tomorrow because uh, I don't think I've ever complained about a class as much as this one. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go jet off now and get my nails done and I'll be back later. Goodbye. Hey, so it is 10.23 p.m. now and I'm finally sitting down to read for the day. I haven't read it all today. I did get my nails done. They're really awesome. Like, I'm loving them. I figured I still have to get a prompt out of the way, and that is the avant garde for both the Book Junkie Trials and for Reading Rush. So I'm going to read this first, and then I will probably actually read this afterwards. I don't know what time and how long I'm going to stay up for, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I'm just done. <laughs> okay. Catch you guys up later. Bye. Ta da! So, it is now 11. I finished Avant Garde. I actually really loved this. It's such beautiful artwork and it's so good. And like, everyone's gay, and I think one person is non binary. And it is so cute. It's this girl, and she just transfers to this new college, and she doesn't really want to join the team. Like, the basketball team just needs one more person before they're like an official team and it's about like the girl like this girl in the front trying to convince this girl over here to join the team and it's really cute and then I read Happy Hustle High which I haven't read in years and it's such an old manga style like it is like the oh god I don't want to show you that scene <laughs> like it is such like typical like old manga like drawing um and like I like it it's <laughs> not the best and I think for me it's definitely like more like a nostalgia read like I think that if you haven't read this before you probably wouldn't like it that much but I still had fun and I <laughs> totally forgot how this volume ended and it's hilarious <laughs> uh, these these actually put me in a really good mood because I was feeling kind of like bitter because of my like class and stuff but time to start to kill a kingdom and I'm excited <sighs> yeah it's not that small. So, I'll let you guys know what I think. Who wants to guess how much I read last night? <laughs> no more. Yeah, so after I finished those two books, my dad came home and we watched the end, the last two episodes of Sweet Bitter on Amazon Prime. It's a really interesting show. And that was it. I didn't read anything else. So, it is now Thursday. It's like 12.30 at the moment. Oh, 11.30. Oh, thank God. If it was at 12.30, I'd be screwed. I have to go do that stupid speech I've been complaining about all week right now. I'm going to go do that at my dad's work. Run a couple errands. Um, I just have like a lot of just like tidy up maintenance thing to do today. And then I just need to read. But I also need to drop off my baby because I'm headed to North Carolina for three days. So I need to drop off Zelda at a cat boarding place which is really depressing because she's my child and it saddens me whenever I have to let her go. I love you my child. Anyway, yeah that's all I wanted to come on here just to let you guys know what's going on. And yeah. Yep. This was productive. Catch <laughs> you guys in a bit. Oh, this is the last volume. Oh. No, this is not the last volume. Hey guys, so it's 2.45 right now. Oh, I'm so tired. I don't know why, but like just walking to and from my dad's work, I'm so tired. I went to book off, as you guys saw. 
and I got some new manga. I love going to Book Off because they have mangas there for three dollars. So it's kind of like half price books, which is really awesome. Um, I got a bunch of mangas. So the first two I got is Manga Dogs Volume 1 and Volume 3 because I only own Volume 2. So I'm really excited. This is by Emma Toyama and if you guys remember, she's the one who writes Missions of Love, which is my favorite like kind of steamy-ish manga. This is just about a mangaka girl who at her school joins the manga club and then the three guys who are in the club are like just stupid and so it's just, just about that kind of stuff. Um, my favorite fantasy kind of manga is Ma, which is March and Awakens Romance. And if you guys remember, I only own volumes like 1, 7, 9, 11 or something like that. Like really stupid numbers because it's just how it happened. I picked up volumes 7, 12, 13, 14, and 15. I don't remember if 15 is the last one or not or if there's another one after this. But these are actually in like really good condition. They were only all $3. So here they all are. I actually remember like us owning this one. But March and Awakens Romance, it's a manga about this boy, Ginda, and what happens is he gets sucked into this world that he's been having dreams about. And once he gets to this world, he kind of becomes the hero of it and he has to defeat this enemy called the chess. And that's what it's about. It's really awesome. Dorothy is like one of my most favorite fantasy female characters. She's this awesome witch and I absolutely adore her. And it's just a really good series, like personally, I think. Um, and then I got games five, nine, and eight of Gentleman's Alliance Cross by Rina Tanamura because I only have volumes one, two, three, four, six, seven. So I'm really excited to finally start, you know, owning this. I've always wanted my own collection of this series because my best friend Tina back in junior school had the entire series and like I just used to borrow them from her so it's really cool that I'm like getting my own one now and Irina Tanamura has like one of the most beautiful art styles like I just adore her art style let me show you guys something that's like non-spoilery it's just such pretty 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 style so yeah I'm just gonna make myself some lunch now and then I have to take Zelda to the cat daycare place which is really depressing like I don't want to do that but I have to so yeah, catch you guys up later. Bye. Hi, so it is time. <laughs> I don't know, I look great. Um, it's 5.38 in the morning currently. Oh my God, I'm just getting ready before I leave for the airport. Just, just curl it, oh God, curling my hair. Um, just wanted to let you guys know. So it's 5.30 in the morning on Friday and I actually did not sleep at all last night. I stayed up and you know what I did? I finished the entirety of To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Caristo. Yes, I did. I did that. And I'm actually quite proud of myself. There was a point there where I thought maybe I wasn't going to be able to do it, that I was going to run out of time, but now nah, nailed it, guys. And I think it's a solid four out of five stars. There's a possibility that it could have been maybe a five star read for me if I hadn't read it in such a quick time span. But I don't know, I still really enjoyed it. I think my favorite thing was I just adore Lyra as a character. Like she is so much fun. And I just found myself always laughing at the things that she was saying. Like she just, oh God, I messed up then. She just did not care. Like, there were times where she was just like, I don't get why you don't just kill them. And then, and everyone just looks at her and is like, uh, okay. <laughs> and she's just so, I don't know, I just loved her character. Like, she was just beautifully written. And the way that she contrasted with Elian was also just phenomenal. Like, I really, I'd heard a lot of great things about the band between the two of them, and I was expecting a little bit more back and forth. It felt a lot like it was more so just Lyra kind of just being snarky back to him and him being like, well, hello there, which I still loved. Um, but I was expecting a little bit more on his behalf going into this novel, and I guess I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit more like Daughter of the Pirate King, because I feel like I had a little bit more to it, but it is also, I don't know, it, they're both very differently written. And I do think that I prefer Daughter of the Pirate King to To Kill a Kingdom, 
but I love the idea of To Kill a Kingdom. And I think the reason why I gave it a four of a five star is just because it is very descriptive in the language. You have to read it. <sighs> okay, of course you have to read it. But like, you really have to read the descriptions and about this world and learning about it. And it's very interesting. I will say like, I love the idea of these of mermaids being these like, awful looking creatures that are more fish than anything else and sirens being the beautiful creatures and the reason for them stealing men's heart and the goddess Keto and her whole story and how everything came to be and all the different lands like I'm glad that we got to see these different kingdoms and everything behind it like I think it was very beautifully crafted and I would love to see more about this place that Alexander Christo created and that's why I'm really excited to see her new book um into the crooked place <laughs> because I think that's just going to be amazing because like if she can do this with a standalone novel she's going to do great things she's going to do great things with a duology honestly like I'm so excited to see what she's going to have in store it takes a lot for me to love a standalone fantasy like there's not a lot of standalone fantasies out there that I'm just enamored with just because I think that they're kind of hard to do and I think that's something that I've definitely realized as I've been on booktube for the last year or so if you guys aren't aware about what To Kill the Kingdom is about it's basically about this siren princess and her mother punishes her and turns her into a human and tells her she has to steal the heart of this prince that is labeled as a siren killer and so she ends up kind of having to do that and it takes two points of views. Otherwise, it's kind of all I really wanted to update you guys on. I'm not bringing my camera with me this weekend when I go visit my friend, just because I don't really want to focus on vlogging this weekend. I kind of, you know, it's my friend's 21st birthday weekend. Haven't seen her in two years. Like, I just want to focus on that, but I am bringing my Kindle with me. <sighs> so, and for anyone who wonders, I know I've been asked a couple times like what I do to do my hair and like, so like this is what it looks like when I curl it, and, but naturally like my hair is like kind of curly. It's just like wavy naturally. So it just looks more put together when it's like this. What time is it? 5.46. Okay, I got 15 minutes. I got this, guys. Yeah. There goes on the rest of my coffee. Okay, okay, I'm gonna just end this clip here and then I'll say goodbye to you guys later. back from my trip it's 4 p.m. on Tuesday I actually stayed an extra day in North Carolina oh come here you're so needy man I'm exhausted I feel dead just a long weekend a lot of socializing and I'm just a little run down first off I didn't read it all while I was gone I did read on the plane ride today on the way back to New York and I'm currently reading The Governess Game by Tessa Dare which is the second book in the Dutch, I don't, I don't even know what the series is. I love it, it has such great witty banter in it. The little series follows this group of women who are kind of just these very independent women from lower classes that don't kind of expect to ever marry into anything higher because it's not how they were raised like properly. The second book follows follows Alexandra, Alex, and she is a timekeeper. So what she does is she sets the clocks for everyone to Greenwich Mean Time. And she ends up going to this one house and it's this dude that you met in the first book very briefly and she kind of tells him off. She's like, uh, you're really crass. And this is kind of creepy. He goes, you would be perfect as the governess to my two nieces because they, the two nieces keep running off every governess. And because Alex kind of, you know, holds her own, he's like, will you please, you know, be the governess to them? And that's kind of what it's about. Um, and I'm loving it. They have such cute banter and, no, I, I just think that Tessa Dad does a really good job and I'm really glad I got into her. I have Riley Marie to thank for that. She's, oh, I love her channel. So I have my Book of the Month YA uh, affiliate box. Even though it's not August 1st when I'm unboxing this, you guys aren't gonna see it until after August 1st, so it's fine that I show you guys what book I chose. 
it'd actually probably shock a couple of people. Um, so I'm gonna use my keys because I can when I'm lazy. The thing is, so normally a subscription to Book of the Month by A is around $15. But if you use my affiliate link down below and use this code right here, I need to actually double check what it is, you will get your first box for just $9.99, which is a great deal for a brand new hardcover release, especially since if you do get Book of the Month YA, this book that I chose doesn't come out till the end of August, but by being part of Book of the Month YA, you can get it beforehand, which is really awesome, yay! So the book I chose for this month is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. Everyone's probably like, oh my God, you didn't love that. No, I didn't. But here's the thing. I still think I would like to reread the book and I think I could still like it. Um, I also would love to give it a second shot and I also wasn't interested in any of the other ones and I still wanted to own this book anyway because I still want to support the author. The only difference is for book of the month, the undercover is always gonna be different. I always have the month on it and this instead of the normal undercover, which is a little bit sad because it's actually really gorgeous if you do order it. So I've actually been considering ordering it anyway and just having two copies of this book, but that's also kind of crazy. So we'll see what I end up doing. But I have read, I don't even remember what I read last week. I read so many books. Uh, you know what, I'm just not going to close out this vlog properly and just say I did the reading rush. I didn't actually complete it because I didn't read seven books, which was like a sort of prompt. But I never actually watched the movie of Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters because I just didn't end up having enough time to watch it. There are only two days left of the Book Junkie trials for me to read The Governess Game and Wicked Saints. Technically I have to read all Wicked Saints tomorrow. <laughs> So we'll see if that happens, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm just exhausted at the moment. So this is me closing out this vlog. <laughs> Bye.